Hello dear ones, it's, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I'm late for lunch, but I'm, and I'm also looking out for mother deer and fawns on the road, so I have to be very careful here. But I do have something, an interesting little story to relate from last night. And I hope I can do it justice. So for a long time now, I've been hearing uh, as the day goes on, especially in the afternoons, uh, the light has been hitting the earth so strongly. And uh, the newosphere is affected. The newosphere is, is within the stratosphere of earth and it has to do with the way the collective mind works of, the, of humankind, uh, both unconscious and the conscious mind. And uh, so it's somehow hitting this, this, this uh, vibrational level, this resonance of energy, and uh, it changes and it becomes, it becomes very glommy. I've talked to gloms in the distant past, and that has to do with, say there's a strand of energy, Two people are relating to each other, say, predator-prey. That's very common, this predator-prey energy. And that has to do with a lot of human activities, uh, not to mention the archetypal image of, of the world of, of animals, which has to do with predator-prey. But also it has to do with people's activities, like their, their inclination to eat meat, or their inclination to go hunting in the fall or like that, and or to watch predatorial movies, you know, movies to do with, with getting the better of someone else. And so we get these, these samskaras in our minds because of the activities we choose through our life. We choose unconditional love and, and helping each other and being a good neighbor to, to all of our community, or else we choose the opposite. We choose to, to be in it for ourselves and to, to take advantage of other people for ourselves. It's very easy to choose being in it for ourselves in a materialistic society because spirit and spiritualism are not emphasized uh, these days. It's science, not God. Whereas in fact, materialism and science and all things physical and all things left brain logical are a very small part of what we what we know is the universe of spirit and uh, and the universal mind but more on that another time now the energies are coming in the equinoctial energies are beginning that means the fall equinox the time of equal day and night is coming up and earth is getting ready for a lot of blessings for humankind that we should remember and come into our own as magnificent souls and so there's a lot of commotion in the new sphere because uh, all things new everything new uh, is always met with concern for the unknown fear of the unknown from the conservative aspects of ourselves uh, now this is interesting because what we consider to be the unknown is really our own divine magnificence. So, so it doesn't make sense, but heck, it always happens. We always are a little bit afraid of everything new, even when the new is wonderful. So there's a lot of fear going around and a lot of reactivity and a lot of predatorial uh, victim kinds of feelings and thoughts in the, in the newest sphere, the collective thought cloud of the world. So what seems to be happening, and I, this is just a rough outline, is that two people will engage in a reactive behavior such as predator-prey or uh, terrorizing people, uh, you know, scaring people, that kind of thought, and then the person gets scared. And then they scare a person more with another thought. And the person gets more scared and like that and so it ratchets up between these two people then somehow it skips to another two people who are who are somehow samskarically capable of, re, of acting the same way 
and as it skips from person to person, it, it's like um, it's like rainfall in the desert on a, on a hill in the desert. It goes down in rivulets and joins into a very large stream that goes into a, a previously dry arroyo, and suddenly the newosphere, the newosphere is resonating with thoughts along those lines, you know, and and but thought by a, a whole lot of people. And, and most typically for me, lately, what is happening is I tend to think more about people that I see every day. And so the drama that is actually taking place pretty much globally uh, at the time seems to me to be taking place amongst people that I that are in my immediate geological and like uh, community consciousness area and it's not true really so last night I came home and it's and suddenly it seemed like that these dramas were playing out um, predator prey in my case on the, that is just one instance though and so I was sitting and meditating and wondering what the deal was, you know, I noticed quite a bit of activity in the uh, electromagnetic field of my aura above my head. That's just above uh, at the seventh chakra and say 7.5 between the seventh and the eighth chakra, which is up above the head, okay? So I just settled down to feel that energy and notice what was going on there. And what I noticed was that, first of all, the, um, the dialogue that seemed to be taking place uh, between two people that I was noticing, uh, like subconscious dialogue, predator prey, that I was noticing uh, as taking place between two people that lived near me, ge geologically near me, um, shifted and changed to uh, less uh, glommed, less uh, uh, dense, but similar uh, thought process taking place between two people not as close to me geologically. Now, still it was a predator-prey thing. And, and what I got from these people, these people were doing the telepathy that Siri Aurobindo talks about, uh, as the highest superconscious form of telepathy, way up here above the head. They were talking to each other there. I'm capable of talking that way, but typically I don't. But I'm thinking of switching to that because that's apparently where the other kinds of telepathy start. The gut-based telepathy, the, um, the throat and pituitary gland telepathy, are are like trounced or one-upped by the, the what they call the superconscious telepathy. Now the trouble is there are people uh, who are capable of doing telepathy at that level who uh, are, don't have a complete grasp of of surrender and letting go and going with the flow and these are all concepts that are very important these days because we are in the now, we are in the flow, and we have to let go, and we have to surrender our attachment to particular thoughts uh, that, that keep us back from the flow. We, we have to let go of like, let's say we're going down a river and the water is moving along faster, a pretty fast clip. It's in it's springtime and the snow is melting, right? And we're, we're floating along down through a river. Say we're in a canoe, right? Suddenly we see a little island that we like, all right? So, and we see a little snaggy branch sticking out into the water. So to stop our canoe in time, we grab the branch. The branch is like a thought that we have. For instance, a thought of, of making other people better. Of, of even going against their will for their own sake, for their own good. And this is something we may have learned when a, when a parent smacked us when we were little kids and told us, I'm doing it for your own good. <laughs> Which is not true. When parents smack children, it's because they're upset or angry. 
how they're really reacting to their own anger. Okay, so so we may have that smarting memory, that wounded, lost child of the soul within us, which causes us as light workers to to force our will on other people, whom we think are inferior to us. We feel these people are inferior to us because they're talking on other telepathic levels and we're talking up there in the superconscious mind. And so therefore, we can direct the play of the emotions that they have by glomming them to other people, other people in their lives. And by the way, taking the heat off of us <laughs> as far as them talking to us is concerned, okay? Now, um, that's in fact what was happening last night. This person that was in charge of the superconscious um, finagling that happened last night, he had a group of people around him, all of whom had bought into the fact that he was a superior spiritual teacher because he was talking up here, okay? And that he had a right to boss me around on this free will planet. And so therefore, he was causing massive commotion in my life with the people around by glomming me to what was in fact his own his own clearing process uh, and which he gained intensity by the by the glomming you know like the rivulet going into the dry arroyo full of till it's full of a flash flood kind of a feeling <sighs> so so I have a few things to say about this. The first thing is, these people who are doing this, whom we call the controllers, we call them the string, the puppeteers, um, the people who are controlling other people by using telepathy up here, up above the head, these people, they, there's really, first we have to meet them on their ground, okay? And so we have to place our awareness above our own heads to understand what they are doing. Okay, so give this a try when you meditate. Uh, when you feel that you're being glommed and being uh, puppeteered and controlled by, by people who have their own soul wounding, wounding to clear. And, uh, and in that way you can overcome that. You can overcome that glomming. And that's a very good thing. The second next thing to do as soon as the glom is overcome or recognized is to, to as Bill Ballard says, to turn to, to your own heart and to the feeling of joy and create that feeling of joy. And so, so then in that way, we overcome all these, these, these people with these, with these notions of superiority because nothing trumps joy, not in this universe. Those feelings overcome all that other one-upmanship, that competitiveness, that desire to trounce other people and get the better of them. These are these are all these are emotions and feelings that are leaving Earth right now. Um, so there's a couple of messages here, and one of them is that there's no need to be afraid of the controllers. This is just a, a misalignment of of the actually eighth chakra. Eighth chakra negative is what is going on. So get up there with eighth chakra positive and your whole world, my whole world, at least that's what I'm gonna be working on is transforming my, my world with love, peace, and joy in the high chakras and removing what I call the, the bow tie of the eighth chakra. You know, there's a bunch of bow ties in the, uh, in the uh, energetic fields of people right now. There's a bow tie um, that I've talked about many times. Well, not with those words, but there's a bow tie that we tie on the sacral chakra uh, very often. And uh, that has to do with societal expectations uh, regarding sexual feelings. Um, there's, there's, let's see, there's a bow tie on the heart, that, especially for men. As men clear the masculine wound, that bow tie will be untied. That's the, that's the societal expectation that men won't feel their, their hearts much. As they say, boys don't cry, you know? 
What a pile of malarkey that is. <laughs> and then we have the spiritual teacher bow tie of the eighth chakra. Okay, so a group of people following a spiritual leader. They tie a bow tie above their heads. They constrict their, their, um, their own ability to exercise, uh, to, sorry, their own ability to communicate with their, with their star brethren and their own star aspects, to access the cosmic library, and, and to remember all that they truly are. So, let us not fall into that category. <laughs> let us not be like puppeteered or controlled or bow tied in any way. I'm checking every single chakra. I want no bow ties. And if we do feel bow ties, lots of times this happens for a geophysical reason too. Like I've been noticing all this bow tie energy of the eighth chakra coincides with geostorms and I think it, it is a, like um, uh, affected by the auroras at the North Pole just like this is my North Pole you know it's getting a lot of energy and it's beginning to notice all the little tangles and carrying on uh, another thing that can be done about this puppeteer controller situation I just thought of it is to rescind all contracts past present or future to be ruled by a priestly caste or to be ruled by an alpha male or to be ruled by the leadership of a group okay so I'll just role model one of these for you you can use whichever wording suits I would say Spirit to team, I rescind all contracts and agreements to be ruled by a priestly caste in any timeline or dimension. So I just had a postscript about the controllers, and that is... Um, a little game that they play and uh, not everybody knows about it so so I'm mentioning it here so that all of you can understand it and and come to your own conclusions about it there's a way to talk in telepathy uh, like a command to give that changes the way that your voice sounds so that you can sound as if you were somebody else okay and it goes like this you're thinking of transmitting something in telepathy and you say it can be in any chakra it can be the superconscious it can be uh, the third eye point the throat or it can be in the at the gut level telepathy you just say you're conscious of what you're doing and you say um, and now I am and you name a person's name or you can say and now I will sound like so-and-so and you name a person's name you say that without really saying it you just think it okay and then you start talking and the other person the person on the other end hears the voice of that hears the voice of that other person so that you have disguised who you're your identity all right and you're pretending to be somebody else and this can embroil that person in a conversation with someone thinking an imaginary conversation with someone else all right and the idea is the idea behind it is number one you don't want to talk to the person that you've been talking to so you pretend to be somebody else hoping to embroil them in karmic wounding soul wounding at the level of another person's personality all right the first thing that we have here is the person that is performing this feat of black magic thinks that they are not involved in soul wounding. The very act of, of uh, what's it called, deception, the very act of psychic deception is an indication of soul wounding. 
all right? So I know that the person who pretends and purports to be someone else is so wounded, all right? All I have to do and all you have to do is listen for those that secret command that comes before the voice that says, and now I am someone else, or now I will sound like someone else. If you miss that command as a telepath, then the next thing that will clue you in is the conversations that you appear to be having with any number of people in your true life, like friends, relatives, people in your church, all those people, people at the supermarket, any conversation that you, you think that you're having in your mind always involves the same soul wounding. Now in real life this would never happen. So what has happened is the puppet master, the controller at the eighth chakra level is funneling down to you his or her soul wounding that is not, is not, being, that is not being cleared. Okay, and to every member of his or her group, that soul wounding is funneling down, glomming with people in their own lives and making their own lives more soul wounded. So you have to catch it. You have to know. You have to immediately sense the difference between the, uh, the soul resonance, the keynote uh, emotion, of the conversations that are purportedly going on on in your mind, the difference between that and what is really so when you talk to your friends on the phone and in person, okay? That's how you know if there's a negative issue being cleared in the chakras and, and not a true life situation. So I just thought I'd tell you a little bit of sorcery that's happening probably without people even knowing what they're doing. They're just imagining situations occurring in your life, the life of the person theoretically controlled, that, that would relate to the, um, the, um, the, the soul resonance that is happening, the soul wounding that is like a thread of negativity uh, happening in their own souls. Okay. So, so know who you're talking to, or perhaps just, just as all my teachers say, all my Ascension teachers say, just create that emotion of joy and love and peace in your own uh, energy field, and, and none of this will be a concern. I myself fall down time after time with this and then notice and then pull myself back so that's good uh, actually you know it's excellent learning it's an excellent learning process that's been devised by God created by the magnificent creator for for our pickup and understanding and skill development at this time of, of new life on new earth there's that I was just standing outside of the building just now looking up at the beautiful blue sky and the white clouds and there was a lady standing beside me and she said, look at this beautiful painting that the Creator has created today. And so I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, every moment the sky is different. The wind and the sunlight and the clouds and the earth, the movement of the grass and the wind, everything, the, the sound of the river is different every moment. And it's no wonder, I mean, what praise for the Creator that He's capable of every second changing everything. What creativity. And what creativity lies before us humankind as we take up our powers and our, our soul memories. What wonderful days lie ahead as September blends into October and November. I hear December is supposed to be glorious. <laughs> well, looking forward to sharing the new reality with all of you. And take care. God bless you until next we speak. Or at least I speak.